before the video starts, the top of my head is cut off because my tripod broke in the middle of the intro. Okay, enjoy. Hey guys, I don't think anyone at all has brought this up ever, but doesn't it seem like everything is getting more expensive lately? What's a guy gotta do to get a dollar slice of pizza these days? I am so worried about buying a house in the future. So everyone has noticed that basically every single streaming service has started upping their prices and ruining their products, right? For example, I'm on Hulu's website right now and I want an all-inclusive streaming package for the cheapest price. That means live TV, Disney Plus, and ESPN Plus. Do you want to know how much that is? $77 a month. That's more money monthly than an entire copy of Katamari Damacy Reroll for the Nintendo Switch and a copy of, um, We Love Katamari Reroll for the Nintendo Switch. That's a lot of money to be paying to a company for a service that they can change anytime they want on a dime. If any of these services suddenly decide that something you like is too expensive to maintain, they're going to get rid of it, and they'll replace it with something that nobody asked for and everybody hates. Or, even better, they'll tell you about something new, have press releases about it, screenings for it, and everybody will like it, and then they'll shelve it for a tax write-off. So they can make room for more reality TV, of course. Every time these companies make a stupid decision that causes their subscriptions to plummet, there's another one that suddenly thinks, hmm. Maybe we should rename our service to Frank. So why exactly are these companies pushing streaming services so much when they've been such a huge point of contention among creators, they're ruining their brand image, and frankly, they're losing money? Well, the companies don't want you to own anything. Let me elaborate a little bit. Over the past few years, we've seen more and more companies decide that they're going to start a streaming service. It got to a point of where the draw of one of these streaming services, Peacock, was literally that NBC had taken The Office off of Netflix. And to give them credit, now, the appeal is that they've got The Office and the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Because of the abundance of these services, tons of beloved shows that used to be collected in one place are now scattered all over the internet. It's like the seven Dragon Balls, but instead of being able to make a wish when you collect them all, you just get to watch all the Spider-Man movies back to back. Usually, you can't watch everything you want without subscribing to at least two streaming services, and unfortunately, I think that number is actually growing. Sometimes, even one show's individual seasons are split up among a ton of different streaming services. Pokemon, for example, has 26 seasons. It's so confusing that they have an entire page on the Pokemon website dedicated to figuring out how to watch the show. Okay, so you're gonna start with the Indigo League on Netflix, which I think covers the first two seasons of the show, uh, and then you'll just hop down to Prime Video to watch seasons three to five, in which case, of course, you'll go down to the streaming service Freevee or Hoopla, which I had never heard of until making this. Then, take your sorry ass back to Amazon to watch seasons 10 to 22, in which case, obviously, you'll head back over to Netflix to watch the final three seasons. Of course, this isn't even including any of the movies which aren't even listed, so good luck finding out where the hell to watch those. I remember back when I was younger, my family used to have movie nights where we'd pop into the local market and grab a movie from the bargain bin or the red box outside, and we'd enjoy that for the night. When we got Netflix, it changed everything. We watched shows we hadn't seen in forever, older shows that we hadn't seen at all, and shows that we probably shouldn't have been watching at that age, but became lifelong favorites. I genuinely think the convenience of old Netflix was worth the trade-off of not owning any of your movies. It was a good value. Having access to a vast library of content that every single company wanted to put their movies on? Awesome. Sign me up for 8 bucks a month and replace my cable box. Unfortunately, back to the present, that is absolutely not the case anymore. The predatory business practices of these companies has soured whatever convenience they could have provided. By making streaming services the only accessible way for us to enjoy movies or TV shows, they are ensuring that they get to decide when and if we enjoy anything. This isn't a new tactic. We've seen it in the industry before with Disney's vault. But now, every company thinks they're the hottest guy on the block with the coolest things to offer, so they have their own vault. On the contrary, I do not care about how many Spongebobs you have on your platform. I am not paying for Paramount+. Plus. While all of these streaming services continue to butcher themselves and rename themselves to the name of a normal-ass guy, retail stores have also cut back on or removed altogether their physical movie or TV show offerings. Bargain bins are harder to find in every store, including Walmart, all the while Netflix decides they're gonna remake another beloved cartoon after nobody asked them to. 
Sorry for the framing change, my fucking phone died. And you might be thinking, well as long as we have the ability to buy these things online, we should be okay, right? Wrong, you moron. How could you even say that? God. A lot of the online platforms you can buy movies on require an account or an agreement to a terms of service, which sometimes allows them to do whatever the hell they want. Just last year, Sony lost the licensing rights to Discovery content on the PlayStation Store, which usually just means they can't sell it to you anymore. However, because of the way the legal agreement worked, they were not only not allowed to sell them anymore, but customers were not allowed to use them anymore. Meaning that if you had bought anything from Discovery on the PlayStation Store, you no longer had access to it and you didn't get a refund. Holy shit. The worst part is this message they sent out that basically said we're deleting all of this content from your library and not giving you a refund, and at the very end said, <clears throat> We sincerely thank you for your continued support. So no, do not buy digitally if you plan on keeping something forever. Unless you can somehow bypass the DRM and extract the source file, you do not own whatever they are selling to you. Any company can just swoop in and decide that you are not allowed to use it anymore. This isn't just in movies and TV either. Music streaming services have pretty much perfected the tactics of getting you to enjoy whatever the hell they want you to enjoy. And they've cornered the market to a point where you'd be an idiot not to pay for their services instead of buying everything yourself. Spotify alone has over 239 million active paying subscribers, all of which have to listen to the music that Spotify deems as profitable in their region. Lately, Spotify has also been pushing artists through their AI DJ, through their curated playlists on the home screen, and even your own playlists, where if you shuffle them, based on the amount of plays that you have per song, they'll put them further in the shuffle list. This is exactly why I've stopped using music streaming and I moved over to a dedicated music player, which sounds pretty stupid because my smartphone can do pretty much the same thing, but I actually like owning my music and being able to play it whenever I want. No company is gonna decide when I get to listen to Paramore. Going off on a little tangent now, I think the abundance and convenience of streaming is starting to dilute people's ability to enjoy things. Let's say you buy one CD a month and you don't know what it is, you don't know if you'll like it, but you pop it into the CD player and just give it a shot. After a few years, you'll have amassed a large collection of music, and you'll be pretty well versed in all of it. You'll know what you like and why you like it, and what you don't like, and you'll have an appreciation for all of your music because you paid for it yourself. Music streaming is like if you condense that long stretch of time into a day, or maybe even just a few hours. You can add thousands of songs to your library almost instantly, and so inevitably you're gonna end up appreciating all of them a lot less. And because it's so easy to just keep adding them, you're gonna start forgetting that they're even there. It's a lot less of a commitment to just add an album to your library than it is to buy a CD, so I don't really blame people for doing this. Maybe this is a completely old head take, but I started noticing that I was treating music like a background activity, and I wanted to appreciate it more. So, I bought a whole ass iPod, and I'm never going back. With my own finite library of music, I'm much less likely to get choice paralysis, and more likely to listen to all of my music. Because the library only grows whenever I buy a CD and deliberately put it on here, I'm a lot more intimate with my music. Plus, I really enjoy the tactility of holding a CD case in your hands or the clicking buttons of an iPod. It's simple, but it makes me feel more connected and in the moment. In addition, when I actually buy music instead of streaming it, I know that a larger portion of that revenue is going straight to the artist. With streaming, Spotify and Apple Music take so much money from these artists and they've made it difficult for them to get discovered on any other platform and so they're kind of stuck. If you really want to support your favorite artists, go buy a CD. It seems like everything is moving further away from physicality and tactility and more towards the cheapest and most effective way to pump content directly into your brain. Even video games are doing it, which is actually kind of impressive that we can stream them over an internet connection, but I don't want it to be the only way that we can enjoy old games, especially since it's plagued by the same problems of these streaming services and it's got its own unique issue in that people with low internet connections can't enjoy them. And honestly, I've got a pretty good internet connection and it still runs terribly. I would much rather just go and buy an old copy of a game and pop it in my system and use backwards compatibility if the PS5 had any. Although, I guess I can't be surprised. 
They are hell-bent on that system having exactly zero games. Just to clarify, I don't want you to feel bad about using streaming services for video games, for music, for TV. It is absolutely not your fault that it just so happens to be the cheapest and easiest way to enjoy these things. It's just important to make people aware of what these companies are doing and trying to manipulate you and making sure that they can control what you enjoy. It's no secret that every single company is gathering data on you. In fact, that's the whole reason you're seeing this video in the first place. They're trying to make sure that you keep using their service, so of course Spotify is going to put you in a little bubble with all the music that you like. And of course, whenever I look up Batman on Netflix, it gives me I Think You Should Leave by Tim Robinson. Instead of actually giving me things with Batman in it, they would rather I just watch a show I like again, because it'll keep me watching. They don't want us to own anything because then they wouldn't control it. As soon as that file is on your hard drive, or you burn a CD with it, or you own it physically, you can enjoy it to your heart's content, and you own it. It's yours. With digital streaming content, they can take it away whenever they want, and I worry that it'll be hard to find anything they don't deem as profitable. So maybe instead of paying for another month of Spotify, you should go out to a local store and buy a CD or two, or maybe even just go online and buy DRM-free MP3s of your favorite artist. Get your video games and movies physically so you can use them longer than PlayStation decides they're gonna pay for a licensing agreement. It's also really fun to have a large mass of plastic in your room that screams, I'm a huge fucking dork. Or maybe don't even stop using streaming services. God knows I haven't. But when you really enjoy something on them, go out and buy it physically. Not only to support the artist who made it, but also so you can ensure that you will always have a copy. I've gotten all these CDs behind me squarely for that reason. I wanted to support the artists, I enjoy having things physically, and I want to ensure that I can always enjoy whatever it is they made. Also, I found a copy of Bookworm Adventures while I was at Game Exchange looking for CDs, so really you never know what treasures you're going to find. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching the end. I really appreciate the support. You guys have been so nice about the transition of content I've been doing over to having my face on the screen, and it's been really, really motivating. Trying out all this new stuff has been pretty big for me, and I've always wanted to do YouTube, and it's really cool to actually have an audience that likes what I'm making and enjoys me for me. Seeing the same people in the comments has really validated me in creating what I want to, because I have an audience. Anyways, like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you pinguinos think. To finish up, I want you to imagine the immense loss the world would have felt if Warner Brothers didn't just dump a bunch of their movies onto HBO Max and Speed Racer was a difficult movie to watch. If that movie wasn't accessible to me, I would have never made this YouTube channel. On second thought, maybe that wouldn't have been so bad.